Hi friends, my name is Trish Roberts and you're listening to Fate Signals from Vega. I wanted to talk about an issue, but first of all I wanted to talk about um, the counterproductive method of doing vegan education, which is to, to shame people and um, demean them in public. I mean, we wouldn't be doing that if we were trying to hopefully bring veganism to, to people who um, are non-vegan. We wouldn't be um, hopefully calling them out in public and generalizing as if they're a bunch of clueless, uh, um, clueless and defensive people. And we also wouldn't be, um, you know, being aggressive toward them either. Some people seem to think that that's the way to do vegan education, but um, and I've seen it on various pages, and it's um, you know shaming people, particularly when we've all been non-vegan, um, you know, calling people corpse munchers and whatever else people um, like to call people who are non-vegan, is a sort of a bit <laughs> a bit hypocritical considering considering we've all, uh, you know, unless we've been born into a vegan family, um, we've all been non-vegan at some point. So it's sort of, um, often that's used as a kind of, mis uh, and it's an used, animal movements are often used as a way to express misanthropy. And that's unfortunate because that's kind of an, exploiting a movement really, isn't it, to sort of vent and, and stuff. So, so that's problematic. <clears throat> and we shouldn't use any movement really to be just using it to, to personally vent. Of course, there are very important issues um, and uh, that we need to address, very, very important issues like racism, and there's plenty of racism in animal advocacy groups, but there's plenty of speciesism in animal advocacy groups too. Um, you know, the promotion of, uh, quote, humane, end quote, animal uh, use is speciesist, and yet many, many um, vegans promote that. which is really unfortunate, and also the promotion of single-issue campaigns because single-issue campaigns say to the public that one form of animal use is worse than another or that um, one species is more important than another. It's not, it's not really a helpful message because the public's already speciesist. They're not vegan. And um, when, you, when, when we put out that message that that one form of animal use is worse than another or one species is more important than another and that's kind of almost inherent in any single issue campaigns. Um, that's what we put out to the public, you know, that, uh, that, we, that that's what we put out to the public, a speciesist message. There's racism in animal advocacy groups uh, when they target you know, say Chinese dog eating campaigns or, or Indonesia and live exports and that kind of thing. And there's also, um, there's also the um, heterosexist thing about um, in, in, in um, animal advocacy groups too. There's also the um, a huge amount of misogyny and sexism particularly coming from people for the ethical treatment of animals. Uh, I mean, just appalling, really. The, and uh, people can excuse it all they like and say, well, you've got to use whatever you can to uh, get the message out. No, but one, promoting one sort of discrimination to address another form is wrong-headed and it's... Um, it, it's and it's sacrificing um, sort of one group for another group, and it really doesn't do anything at all. It doesn't do any good. And I won't go into Peter and all the awful things that they um, that Peter have been putting out there that sex is a misogynist. But um, 
I've also done a little video just recently and maybe I'll just talk about it here rather than do two separate things but I was looking for my site how to go vegan on YouTube I did a little video site of the podcasts that I do on howtogovegan.org and I was looking for it and um, and I had to wade through um, just dozens and dozens of videos um, of these uh, pretty white girls um, talking about vegan. I didn't watch them but you know you could just tell by the the uh, thumbnail you know the sort of the direction that was it was coming from and it um, most certainly wouldn't have been an ethical one it was you know the health thing and the, uh, the the pretty stereotypical pretty white girl and I'm sure there's a lot of um, folks who probably click on that video and you can tell because you know the the most popular videos are the ones that are up up at the top I'm, I'm sure that you know there'd be um, lots of clicks on that but it's not for the reasons that we would hope that they would be for and that is you know to address animal exploitation and end that um, it's it's because people are you know it's a sort of like um, a, a lot of them are sexualized videos you know, the, the, the sort of scantily clad white, pretty, you know, stereotypically pretty white women. Um, but that's sort of like, um, that's in the world of welfareist, welfareist veganism, and you can't even really call it veganism because veganism is an ethical position that rejects using animals for food, that's meat, dairy, eggs, honey, clothing, um, wool, silk, fur, leather, um, entertainment, and other reasons. It's, it's a sort of a, it's a rejection of the property status of animals and the recognition of their moral personhood, that they should not be treated as things, as resources. You don't get that on any of these videos that claim to be vegan. So the very sort of name of the, these videos and everybody calling them, you know, how to go vegan and stuff, it, it's not, that's not veganism. It's, it's how to eat, how to be healthy and eat a plant-based diet. But that's not veganism. And that, it, then it just becomes like a life, um, like it, it just becomes a, um, it just becomes another kind of diet. And there's so many of them now. You know, there's so many so many, many diets. So there's just so many, many diets out there, so many health kicks. And it, so it's just swallowed up in that. So it, it doesn't, it's not really helping anybody. It's really just a, it's really just an excuse for gathering together and looking at pretty women and fussing over food. It becomes like a foodie health site. You know, a sort of almost like a, a sexualized kind of thing. Um, and a, a sort of consumerist thing. And also it often becomes, you know, a place where people can peddle their products and, um, you know, peddle their products and peddle their books and everything. And you see more and more and more of that like um, you know, there's some there's a, like there's a conference, a vitality conference coming up, which sort of um, has a lot of different, you know, of the 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 usual people you see at the various um, sort of animal sort of this kind of I don't know. You you, you just see the, these various people, and they do good work. Some of them, you know, for promoting health and and um, nutrition and stuff but you know we need a shift in thinking we need more than um, than people just thinking that um, you know how to we need more than just education about much more than education about a diet a plant-based diet because veganism is an ethical position and it's kind of it's kind of offensive to see these sort of 
sites that call themselves vegan. And, um, and really it's just all about health and promotions of products and books and individuals and stuff and muscly men and, you know, pretty white, you know, stereotypically pretty white women. It gets really offensive. And um, so, you know, when, when I looked on that how to, for my site, How to Go Vegan, that's a lot of what I saw was, you know, muscly boys and um, pretty stereoty stereotypically pretty white women and uh, talking about, you know, health and, and uh, you know, and foodie stuff and and of course there's a place for that, you know, like it's important to get out that, you know, eating plant-based diet is, 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 it's delicious and it's incredibly healthy. And, uh, you know, I, I, I myself, you know, uh, really value sites like um, nutritionfacts.org, which um, even though I, I'm, I'm not in agreement with the association, like the, uh, it, I mean, it doesn't mention anything about ethics, but it, it doesn't pretend to be about ethics. It's um, it's got fantastic science-backed um, information about a plant-based diet, and uh, you know they go through all the latest nutrition journals and health journals, and it's it's a fantastic site. Uh, but it doesn't claim to be a vegan site. It's just a nutrition site, right? So that's I don't have a problem with that, and it also doesn't promote. As far as I can see, it doesn't promote any sort of happy animal slavery, you know, the, quote, humane, end quote, um, animal use. So because it doesn't claim to be a vegan site, I, I don't have such a problem with it. And also it's got valu very valuable information. But a lot of these videos, and I'm not surprised on YouTube that so many videos um, are like that, that call themselves vegan, because just look at people for the ethical treatment of animals. They're... Um, often, you know, always hooking in with celebrities if celebrities have more important things to say than everyday people. You know, the worship of celebrity culture, the worship of the stereotypical, the promotion of the stereotypical ideas of beauty and um, the heterosexism and all of that, you know, um, the sort of most mostly white faces that you see on these um, sites. It's it's not that it's just white focused. It's uh, you know it's got all sorts of things, sexism and a whole lot. And then it's also got promotions of um, speciesism through promoting welfare. And uh, there's a whole lot of things wrong with it. Um. So that's why, you know, promoting the ethical position is so important. It's so important. And it might seem dull to people, but unless, you know, unless we internalize the ethical position, we're bound to go back to it. And then you see all these sites on, you know, you, you see all these blogs. I'm an ex-vegan. I was, you know, suffering from this and this and this. They're not ex-vegans. They were never vegan. They'd never internalize the ethical position because when, once you do that, like I've said before, once you do that, you never go back if you've truly internalized it. But then we have the opposite thing of, you know, the, the, then we have the ways that we address these things. <clears throat> you know, we, the, ways, the ways we address these things, for example, you know, the fact that it's so white, you know, the, well, there are so many things wrong with it that, that's just one thing that's wrong with uh, these groups like Peter and um, and other groups like them. There's so many things wrong with them, where to start. And that's why I just don't bother with them anymore. Um, and so, and to lump all vegans in with those groups is problematic. And sometimes I find some of the anti-racist education tends to sort of lump all vegans in with those really out there groups that are so white and they're, they're promoting sexism and misogyny and all sorts of things. It's, and it's, it's just a speciesist mess. So that's kind of problematic. But also, 
and I'm going to get to this point which um, I'm sorry if people find this maybe if, they, if you take if you take exception to what I'm about to say but I I do have a problem with shaming people to make a point and calling it education um, I see a bunch of, of people sort of trying to um, you know, doing, doing, supposedly doing anti-racist education and doing stuff that we wouldn't hopefully be doing as vegans trying to educate the non-vegan public. And that is generalizing about a group and then sort of being sarcastic towards them and mocking them and uh, demeaning them and humiliate, trying and sort of making humiliating statements. That's that's not that's not education. That is bound to have the opposite effect. Particularly if people are coming to pages to be allies of particular groups, and then sort of constantly mocking and demeaning. And I've said before, like. Dr. Cornell West, he's, um, he's an incredible black activist, author. Um, he's written numerous books and he's, he's amazing. I'm a huge fan of Dr. Cornell West, and uh, if I can put it that way. I love listening to his talks and I think he does the most amazing talks about um, uh, I mean, he was one of the one of the people who was most critical of Barack Obama, because Barack Obama was just promoting neoliberalism and actually wasn't doing anything really to end the violence against black people in the United States. It wasn't doing anything to end the structural racism with the mass incarceration. He 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 deported more people of color from the United from the United States than any president in the last 60 years. And this is a black, um, you know, president. And the reason Dr. And Dr. Cornel West, you know, was, um, he was as critical of Barack Obama and the bombing of seven Muslim majority countries. And I've said this before, and I'll keep saying it again until we, uh, because it's an important thing and it's not mentioned, but he bombed seven, he was bo dropping three bombs every hour of every day, of every week, of every month, of every year of the last eight years on Muslim, seven Muslim majority countries. The historical context, the social context of these issues are of the utmost importance, which is why I respect your work so much. Uh, Dr. West, you've even called Barack Obama a, quote, Rockefeller Republican in blackface who's unworthy of swearing in on Dr. King's Bible. I mean, in your experience alone, is Obama being an African-American a factor that deters people from criticizing him? Because inherently they're looking at him as a symbol of progress just for the sake of him being African-American. No, absolutely. I mean, one, there's been a shameful silence in the black community in terms of keeping alive the legacies of Martin King and Malcolm X and Fannie Lou Hamer, which is telling the truth and bearing witness to justice, beginning with black people, but concerned about what goes on in the Middle East. Palestinians just as valuable as Israelis. What's going on in Guantanamo Bay? 166 persons, 86 are now ready to go, but they refuse to be released, and there's no serious public conversation. You all have had the, 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 the courage to at least report that. What's going on in so many different arenas where the corporate media remains hidden and concealed? How many innocent children have really been killed by U.S. drones with bombs dropped on those precious persons? Let's just tell the truth. Tell the truth everywhere. Russia, United States, Ethiopia, Guatemala, Argentina. Let's, let's engage in serious highbrow journalism. Yeah, let's tell the truth and let the facts, uh, you know, go where they lay and let people decide That's what right. they want to decide based on the facts available. Thousands dead with drones. I mean, Obama's escalated That's drone right. warfare exponentially. It's really astounding when you look at the visualization of this data, uh, Dr. West. And I wanted to, to actually expand the conversation to racial inequality 
it's so staggering when you look at the prison industry alone yeah. in this country. I mean, it's alleged, and I don't know if this is actually true. I've heard both facts that there are more African Americans in prison today than were enslaved proportionally in, in 1850. Sorry. In fact, according to a Pew Research study, an African American male without a high school diploma is more likely to end up behind bars than get a job. I mean, why is it that the prison industry seems to be acting like the modern day slave trade? Well, we turn to Michelle Alexander's great book, The New Jim Crow. She's one of the great prophetic voices of our time and talks quite explicitly about the war on drugs, being a war on poor people, especially black and brown poor people, just like here in New York City, stop and frisk, 5,000 stop and frisk cases since 2002 under Mayor Bloomberg. This is a law, this is a mayor that the president says is a terrific mayor, but five million stop and frisk, 87 percent black and brown, only two percent tied to criminal activity. That's the kind of autocratic authoritarian sensibility we see expanding in the United States, and we have to be honest about it. We have to fight about it, fight against it. We have to protect rights and liberties of everyone. Um, so, you know, it, it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter if a, if a president is black. It doesn't matter if they're a woman like Hillary Clinton. I mean, she's incredibly corrupt uh, and has been incredibly corrupt and so, you know, so many problems with Hillary Clinton and her campaign and her past. I mean, I won't go into it here, but I'll, I'll leave some links. It, it doesn't matter that these people are, are it doesn't matter if, if somebody's a woman or a black person, an LGBTI person, and they're being put into a position of power, it doesn't matter at all if they're promoting, um, you know, racist uh, policies or they're, or they're bombing innocent civilians in other countries. It doesn't matter. I mean... I'm not going to support somebody from the LGBT community just because I'm part of that community, the LGBTI community, just because I'm part of that community, I'm not. I support people for what they stand for. And I don't know everything about LGBTI issues. I don't. So it's okay if somebody wants to challenge anything I say or question what I say. Uh, and if I say something that's, that's uh, really naff and unresearched or, <clears throat> or ignorant, I hope that somebody will say something to me in a respectful way. And I'm not going to call them... Um, heterosexist or homophobic or whatever, you know? I'm not going to call them that. If, you know, if, if they're respectful and they're, they're saying it because they want to bring something to my attention and it's sincere, then that's okay. And hopefully, I mean, it's good to approach people in private and, and say something to them. Um, but if, you know... If they're not listening, of course, you know, maybe one might want to do a critique in public. I don't know. But it's okay to approach people from groups, even if you're not part of that group, as long as it's coming from a sincere place. And, um, and you know, I, I've seen people sort of who, you know, they talk about, well, you're not allowed to question me because I'm a person of color. And you're a racist if you question me. Well, that's just, you know, that, that's, that's really counterproductive and it's not a very inclusive way of trying to educate the public. And uh, I've had questions for some people, and, but I'm reluctant to say anything because, uh, uh, because I think it would be pointless trying. And all one gets is that you're a racist if you challenge uh, or if you uh, critique something or even even sort of critique, even saying these things uh, I'll probably be seen as some sort of, well, she's just a, what, what does she know? She's just a white person. Yeah, I, I know, I don't know a lot of stuff and I never claim to know a lot of stuff. 
in my, <clears throat> in my uh, you know, I'm learning just like everybody else. I'm learning all the time. There's stuff that I didn't know just until recently about the economy and about how economies are run and that there's a lot of things that could be fixed straight away if there wasn't this myth about the economy and how um, and, and taxes and deficits and everything. I've been learning about modern monetary theory, trying to anyway. I haven't had much time to do it, but I'm trying, and I'm doing that you know, through the Real Progressives page on uh, Facebook. I don't limit myself to just learning about um, veganism or... Well, it's all included in veganism in a way, isn't it? Because... Humans and non-humans. I mean, the, when, Doug, when Donald Watson talked about veganism, he said, you know, we should try and expand that um, definition, you know, to, um, of, 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 you know, expand the definition of non-violence. And, um, I mean, every, you know, non-humans and humans are important. Of course, non-humans are, I, I've been told by somebody that um, non-humans are not a special group. I'm sorry, but they are a special group because humans are not property, not legally anyway, and non-human animals are viewed as property. Non-human animals are viewed as property, so yes, they are a special case, and that's, that's why I focus on them mainly. You know, they are a special case. They're exploit. They are an invisible group, and yet they're the they're being tortured and murdered by, you know, the billions, the hundreds of billions every year. So they are a special case. There's more non-humans killed for trivial reasons, for mostly food, every four days than there are all genocides, murders, wars disasters, etc., in human history. So yes, they are a special case. And that's why I focus on them, because speciesism is mostly invisible. And everybody, that, except, for the vegan, except for vegans that are, don't believe in happy animal slavery, everybody is promoting, everybody is either engaging in speciesism by eating, wearing, and using animals, or engaging in speciesism like welfarist vegans who promote happy animal slavery, who promote single-issue campaigns that, that favor one group, one species over another, or favor or think that one sort of animal exploitation is worse than others. So yes, there's plenty of speciesism, even in people by people who call themselves vegans. So yes, I do think they're a special group. And we all should think that. And we all should focus on that mainly, but not not excluding, of course, humans. And, of course, you know, I've got a, like this channel that I'm, this channel, Faint Signals from Vega, that, that is bringing in social, human social justice issues uh, and into, and interspersing veganism, bringing in the, the issue of non-human animals where I can. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I try to do that. I, I, you know, human social justice issues are very important to me. I spend a lot of time focusing on those too. But, but it's so important to, to highlight the issue of non-human animals and, their, and, and veganism. So important. So it is a special case, and I'm sorry, if, uh, I'm sorry to disagree with some folks from... Uh, that some folks who <coughs> who say that it's not. Anyway, really, that's kind of what I was wanting to say. That that I, I was wanting to say that you know, education. If we want people to come around to to something, demeaning them, humiliating them generalizing about a whole group. It's not helpful. Just as it's not helpful as vegan, as when we're engaging in veg vegan education, um, 
humiliating, mocking and calling people corpse munchers, etc. It's not helpful. And I, I think I have to say, and I invite everybody to check out the way Dr. Cornell West um, talks about issues of um, anti-racism. And most of his, most of the people that follow him are white people. And he's not tippy-toeing around the issue. He, he doesn't hold back. You know, he's clear about stuff, and he was clear when he critiqued Barack Obama, the first black president. Everybody, you know, it's not a post-racist world just because a um, somebody happens to be black and voted president and then enacts all this, um, these racist, or c continues on with all these racist policies um, and mass incarceration and bombing people, bombing seven Muslim majority countries, people who are incredibly vulnerable, assisting Saudi Arabia. Assisting Saudi Arabia in bombing one of the poorest countries in the Middle East, that being Yemen. And now there's a massive famine there. It, there's ethnic cleansing going on in Yemen. One child every 10 minutes is dying of famine. Why, why are we not talking about that? Do, do they not matter? If we're not, if we belong to countries that are participating in this sort of violence, like Western allies, and we're not ever mentioning it, then why aren't we? Don't those people, don't, don't these people count? So that's what I find disturbing, I must say. The lack of interest I find in what our governments are doing in the West um, from, from those of us who call ourselves intersectionalists I find quite disturbing, really. Because governments are acting in our name, aren't they? And there's been hundred, there's been over a million people who've been murdered in Iraq since that illegal war was started in 2003. And there, it's an on, it's an ongoing thing. Seven Muslim majority countries, and I don't care if you are an atheist or an anti-theist. It matters that people. In Muslim majority countries, civilians, women, men and children are being bombed for, for reasons that are to do with hegemony in the region and uh, resources. And now they're trying to start a war with Russia and starting to put out anti-Russian propaganda. And I'm talking about the U.S. government. You know, that could lead to World War Three. Have you noticed? Are you paying attention to how much anti-Russian propaganda is going on now? It has no basis at all. The Russians didn't hack the election, and William Binney, who's an NSA whistleblower, has stated that it's you, they could find out in a New York minute if the Russians hacked the election, but they don't, right? This whole thing about Russia is is just... Part of it is to get rid of Trump, right? And, and the CIA has been lying to people for decades. That's part of their job description. The U.S. has interfered and overturned democratically elected governments. They've been doing it for decades, interfered with elections and stuff. If we don't know these things, they've interfered with 80 democratically elected governments over the decades and overturned them and, uh, and even gone to the, and, and interfered with their elections and, put, and, and, and have done regime change through military actions. Look it up. Why don't we care about that? Where is the anti-war movement? If we're intersectionalist or whatever, um, 
Don't we care about that? And this is happening right now. So we have to start we have to start speaking out. Why are we not speaking out? Do we think that is it because we're so it's a sort of a learned helplessness that lives are at stake. That's what I'm saying. But back to Cornell West, you know, he he had no it was a very unpopular thing to be critiquing the first black president as a black man, right? Because it's the right thing to do and because it doesn't matter that Barack Obama is black. It doesn't matter that he's black. He's engaging in as much of the racist policies that any of the others have been engaging in. In fact, worse. Because he's expanded the wars to seven Muslim-majority countries. So that's why, you know, when some people say, oh, you shouldn't, you know, you, you shouldn't challenge you know, if you, if you challenge somebody who's talking about issues and uh, you're not, you know, you're not a person of colour, um, that that makes you racist. That's, if it's sincere challenging, then that should be met with, um, you know, with some, some sort of a interest. And, um, you know, there are other people besides Cornel West who have critiqued Obama. Anyway, anyway, um, that's really all I had to say about that, really. I'd like to see, you know, some some more sort of inclusiveness, but sort of maybe some different approaches to education. Just some different approaches that aren't just into kind of venting in a way. It's good to have a vent and gosh, I could have a vent about all the heterosexism <laughs> all the heterosexism that's around constantly. I mean, not that I want to get married, but I think people should just have the right to get married if they want. I don't believe in all of that particularly, but I mean, until that changes, you know, it, it just puts in the thing about second-class citizens. I'm still living in a country where, um, you know, gay people can't get married. I mean... I could go on, I could have a rant about that, but I could, I could, um, you know, carry on about um, what, you know, I could carry on about uh, heterosexual people if I wanted to, and what good would that do? It's just, it's, you know, but of, of course people, it's good if people have an awareness of these issues that, you know, that everything is, a lot of what is presented to us in the media, etc., it's all heteronormative and, and it's exclusive. It excludes groups. And there's plenty of trans people who are being murdered and killed. There's, there's been at least six, just in the last couple of months in the United States, six black trans people. And that whole trans thing... I'm going to do a, probably a video about that because I mean there are there are there are feminists you know who think that uh, trans people are trying to take over and and uh, women's spaces for God's sake you know it's just that the bullshit is never ending no offense to bulls the bullshit's never ending anyway 
That's all I wanted to say. So thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. If uh, Faint Signals from Vega, it's, the username is, um, I haven't got one yet because it's only just new and hopefully, um, but I do have a Facebook page and that's, username is at Vegan Trove Extra and um, all, I'm also on Twitter at Vegan Trove Extra, the username. Okay, well, thanks for listening. Till next time. Bye for now.